Um, and welcome everyone to the 16th edition of the Cosentino webinars. Uh, our topic this session is something that I think we we all have a stake in. Everyone is either has some interest in hospitality design or maybe the people who are listening to us from home and their offices uh, are looking at making hotel bookings. As we focus on the hotel industry, we're going to be looking at how hotel design will thrive in the low touch economy. The low touch economy is a new phrase that's entered all our lexicons and basically refers to the desire to stay hands free and how it's changing the world as we know it. As guests now rate hotels on their sanitization skills, will the need for contactless interactions hamper or enhance hotel design? And on the panel today to talk about that, we have I'm hopefully going to run through in the order in which you can be seen on screen and apologise if I don't. Maybe you could give everyone a little wave just so we know who, who you are. We have Ferris Alfahen, who's the co-founder and design director of Force Face Design. Isabel Pintado, senior vice president of Wilson Associates. Lee Worthington, managing director of MENA at JPA Design. And Vera Diekman, who's the founder of EXO Atelier. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a really interesting and productive discussion. We've got some talking points to run through and then we'll take questions from our audience. So by all means, type your questions down the side or like Miriam said, if you're feeling brave, please unmute your mic. Um, right, to business. The first um, thing I'd like to throw out for a point of discussion is what has been the initial impact of the low cost low touch economy on hotel hospitality design um maybe we could look at what short-term fads that have been coming through and what do you think are long-term trends isabel would you like to kick us off with this one okay lucky me yes um, <laughs> the chosen one i think I, I think there's there's uh certain things that all of us have seen from from the beginning things that are tied to the measures, the, the things that have become compulsory to, to hotel guests, be it mats when you arrive, be it the screens, there's that enormous component that you see at any sort of scenario where when you're interacting with another individual, there is a requirement for that screen, that transparent screen. And I think that that's something that to some extent is gonna become intrinsic. It's, it's a short term, but it's going to really be a, a long term. You need to protect your staff. So if you run in a hotel, that staff that is permanently there dealing with uh, guests arriving all the time, uh, you know, visitors to the restaurants, asking for queries, etc. You need to protect them. And, and, and by doing so, we need to design for that to be factored in. By now, what we're seeing is that sort of that short term uh, solution, which is that perspex sheet in front of you, which is either held by the base or is suspended from from the ceiling. You see it's done differently in Europe, you see it done differently in the States, but at the end of the day, it's the same solution. It's that barrier to protect either side of, of that screen. We need to start designing in a way that that becomes an integral and quite incorporated into the designs. We don't really want it to constantly look as if it's a temporary addition. It needs to be part of that. There are elements of distance. You know, in the past, we never really had to think of the distance of the person queuing behind you or the person sitting next to you. And I think the parameters of how we grid spaces, how we allocate space to, to each person will naturally change. I think you know, we've, we've gone through this fairly, uh, well, to this incredible hardship right now of having to, you know, complete isolation. We've had to distance ourselves enormously, not being able to leave our house, etc. So, and then there is that, that element that of fear that we still have, you know, we've gone through something quite major, but we're coming out of it. I think most, most people are quite positive about going back to work, going back to the office, but we still need to factor in that fear. And as designers, one of our main responsibilities is to make people feel safe, to make people uh, feel comfortable within the spaces that we design. And that is something we need to factor in, be it because of distance or be it because of the way that we create circulations. There's, I think, I think at the end of it, all the long-term 
trends will be guided towards a feeling of safety and an actual physical safety that people have to, to be surrounded by. So it, it's keeping that in mind. What makes you feel secure? What makes you feel secure in a space? And with that sort of personal rationale, that personal thinking, applying that to the designs. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, do you, what do you think whether the social distancing element is going to continue as a as a long term option? Is that something we're going to still be seeing next year, the year after? I think, to, to be honest, as soon as, as the situation relaxes, as soon as the global situation uh, eases, uh, people will forget, will naturally forget, which in a way is something that is good because it brings positivity back. But in another way, it does put us at risk again of this happening, you know, of repeating itself. So I think social distancing, I mean, I've been, I'm in Spain right now on, on holiday. And in Spain, traditionally, you know, you meet anybody and it's two kisses and two kisses. And I've always been quite surprised, you know, by that sort of physical contact with complete strangers. And one of the blessings of this scenario now is this avoidance of constant <laughs> kissing strangers. But it's but it it is it is it's made people realize that you you can still be very close to somebody without having to have that extreme uh, sort of physical connection like shaking hands or you know in in Latin countries uh, giving people two kisses. I think it's it's it will continue to happen, but not I believe not to the extreme that we have right now, where there has to be that two meter distance. Well, depending on the country, as Vera was mentioning before, where, where are you now, Vera, that you said it's now one meter? Uh, no, it, it was one meter in France. So uh, France. when we, uh, yeah, France is one meter. Yeah, so you see there's, there's different rationales, different countries, but I think that that, <clears throat> that sort of pre-marked distance, I think that that will gradually disappear. Feras, you mentioned uh, we've discussed previously. You've done some um, social distancing screens for restaurants. Yes, we do. Yes, I mean, of course. I mean, as as we all know, I mean, in restaurants we all sit quite close together. I mean, I think the big impact. I mean, arrival in a hotel is one thing. The big big impact is going to have to show, and I think that's the big change we all will have to see is in the restaurants. I mean, the point is for a hotel, I mean, that's one big thing we also um, um, experience now when we have been traveling, that the hotel directly offered us, for example, um, in-room breakfast without any, like directly, so they actually ask us, prefer to have the breakfast in room, because for them it's easier to to guarantee you the distance and you, you could just um, ask per menu what you want to have and they just bring it to the time you want to have it on your room. So I think a big problem or a big point for every for every hotel will be the breakfast scenario, because we all know um, breakfast is the, the one dish every, every client takes literally in a hotel, restaurant and uh, this is the major point where all uh, people coming together and I mean that will have a big impact and we um, of course thinking about creating um, restaurants not only hotel restaurants also other food and beverage outlets where you still keep a kind of certain secure distance without looking too clinical without looking too clean and too antiseptical you know because I mean we still are human beings and we want to interact with people and we want to have um, um, you know like gathering together have exchange I mean that's what we are all about right I mean that that's what life is about I mean being isolated I mean we all could experience this over weeks I think that was not the experience we wanted to have so that's all so a part of it. So but of course, still, you need to keep somehow a distance or maybe incorporate in a in a cozy design and in an atmosphere which still invites people to join and to spend time in it. I mean, like it's no one wants uh, clean uh, steel surfaces with glass divider in between you and, and uh, sanitizer all over the place um, to celebrate a nice um, candlelight dinner. Yeah, and I think that's Vera. one of the challenges for design. Jane, Vera, one, one of the things that uh, I've come across and we've seen in, with, with operators, we've seen in different projects we're doing, is the notion of shifts, of having to schedule your attendance to any of the, of the venues. 
be it to the spa, be it to breakfast, as, as Vera, you were mentioning. So that's becoming a lot more scheduled. And I think that this will continue to happen. There's uh, the notion of having to keep control of the numbers, because there's now a, a very strong limitation to how many people can be in a space. Mm -hmm. So being asked, what shift do you want for breakfast? The nine, the 10 or the 11, you know, things that used to happen 30 years ago because all day diners were so much smaller. That is coming back to some extent because the food plate is still quite large, mm -hmm. but the capacity that they can have is a lot smaller. And do you think that's where we're going to see more introduction of contactless technology? So people could use an app to book their breakfast slots, could use an app to access their hotel room. Yeah. 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 Is that something you can ask the factor in your designs by clients? Is that contactless technology already you know, becoming a, an element of what you need to do? Um, you know, I mean, it's 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 already existing. I mean, it's uh, several brands are already producing it. Several brands also, I mean, have it right. I mean, public, for example, um, traveled there three years ago. I mean, like just, just oh, they have this app. You're checking in already over your mobile phone. You get your key on your mobile phone. You only use your phone. You don't even touch any key or key card. So, um, but on the other hand, technology costs money. So now, I mean, like uh, seeing, of course, the travel industry, hospitality industry got hit hard. Um, I think the, 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 the factor investing money in an industry which is already on, on the bottom, um, it's also a factor which is not easy. And, and uh, yes, we need to. Yes, you need to see this. But on the other hand, uh, it's, also, it's also pending from, from the guests. Like, you know, um, I think the new way of traveling has a lot to do with the thing of how you trust and who do you trust? Who do, for example, it might be even a boutique brand because it's a brand where you have the feeling um, I trust you. I travel to your place and destination already several times and I feel much more um, convenient and safe in your um, in your location because you only have, I don't know, 50 rooms or 30 rooms uh, instead of having 200, 300. I mean, that's another thing. So we have to see. But on the other hand, people like together and people love to be together with others. People love to exchange and people will come together again. Yes, I'm 100 percent sure. And I agree with Isabel when she said, like, there will be a point where we going back somehow to normal, the new normal. So and how how does design and, and gender trust? For us, I think you've done some restaurant designs that have incorporated social distance. And how do you? How do you incorporate that into your designs without losing the design DNA of the project, but also fostering some trust amongst yeah, the customers? Sure. Yeah, but uh, first I want to touch about uh, the impact of uh, the pandemic on the in, on the, the industry. I believe the biggest impact was the uh, the change of the travel purpose. Uh, Gone are the days of uh, hopping on a plane for a business meeting. Uh, uh, because of that, I believe that uh, we will see hospitality trend away from an efficient hotel uh, or hotels that cater business troubles. So um, I believe instead we will see more of a focus on travel for the sake of pleasure uh, and vacation purpose. Uh, until travelers feel safe again, uh, people will pr prioritize their their travel plans so now once we we come to the the the, the, the guest who wants to choose the the hotel for the hotel selection uh, i believe feeling safe will be the new luxury to be considered uh, guests will no longer consider safety as a given uh, so hotels really uh, need to reinforce it uh, at every touch point, so reducing the, the, the amount of touch points, uh, creating uh, new solutions, uh, getting the technology on board more than before. Uh, of course, we still want to create beautiful spaces uh, for people to visit, uh, but we really need to do is to rethink the old ways of uh, doing things from, from a design perspective, uh, design point, point of view. Uh, so, yeah, this one. What would you say conceptually? What would the the perfect post pandemic hotel look like? How do we incorporate the touches like t technology, reinforce the guest experience, but still ensure the design processes creating beautiful things? Uh, 
so usually hotel industry is not that quick to innovate. Uh, it usually takes a push. Uh, and while nobody would have wished for this, COVID really accelerate the evolution of the industry. Uh, and this is uh, our moment to push the industry into low touch experience uh, with something that feels safe and sustainable. So there is a lot of measures, there is a lot, a lot of technologies uh, can get on board, um, what we can call as a smart guest experience. Uh, for instance, uh, let, let the technology do the check-in. Uh, by enabling uh, guests to check in remotely from the smartphones, uh, even in the, in the, the self-checkout also. Uh, so uh, it would be, they can bypass the welcoming and say goodbye to the hotel through the, 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 uh, the apps. Uh, also, as Vera mentioned, that there is apps uh, for, uh, you can, which you can use as, as a key room. So today, more and more hotels are offering guest room access via their uh, smartphones uh, app to bypass the front desk. And, uh, uh, and also, it's, it's very good because uh, it will save the cost of the uh, envir environmentally harmful plastic key cards. So this also will be, be a sustainable approach for, for it. Uh, getting creative with lights, uh, automated uh, controls for lights will enable hands-free use of using the smart technology. Uh, also, the use of sensors to avoid touching door handles, door pulls. Uh, so, yeah, this I believe there are a lot of measures. As Vera said, it's it's expensive, it costs money, and uh, but if you have to stand out now within the competition, you have to start to consider this, this kind of measures. It's interesting that you've mentioned sustainability because that's something that we've had some discussions about um, whether low touch is going to mean single use because we're already seeing in restaurants that if you go to a restaurant now in Dubai, then you could be handed plastic cutlery that's pre-wrapped. So we wouldn't, we, it's one aspect that I think would designers still be considering sustainability as part of the hotel project, or is that something that needs to take a back seat in favour of safety? Vera, yeah, I can see you shaking. I'll let Vera so. finish. Yeah. Be, sorry, no, Vera, shaking her head. I'll let you finish, and then I'm, I'm shaking my head because also someone has to touch your wrapped plastic cutlery you know like to be honest like i mean like if you have a professional dish cleaner and you run it through 95 degrees of feet of water in uh, your things more or less clean i mean like that's really like and but if you get this plastic thing in foiled and whatever like you, you, five thousand people have touched it before in a factory in the thing and and and, and you get it laid down and you un unwrap it and and it's just a huge amount of trash i mean we're creating a huge amount of trash you're taking a mask every day or two or whatever you you get deliveries everything is wrapped in plastic foil so i mean that's another issue we have i mean plastic is our biggest problem in the world it, ta it takes 400 years to um to literally have it turned down and then every piece of plastic which has ever been produced on this planet if you did burn it it's still here so I mean, like I mean um, yeah it's nice that we do that but unfortunately um, then you maybe use a copper cutlery and then you have your issue solved as well so I'm, I'm not a big fan of this plastic cutlery and then another wrapping and another box I mean it's the same like if you travel now you get like a you get your menu like it's like a bento box wrapped up in plastic. Mm. Not sure if this is the way. I mean. It'd be interesting to look at how different parts of the world are tackling, tackling this. Isabel, I think you mentioned in the in the Far East um, that they're looking at you know things like fountains in hotel rooms. So you're not look, you're not bringing in plastic bottles and uh, you know unsustainable ways of getting water to the guests. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I feel awful because we've not given a chance to Lee at all. Yeah, let's so, give it to uh, Lee. Hurry, Lee. As if I've taken, I've taken too much room, <laughs> too much space already. Lee. Sorry, I went about ten minutes ago. Yeah, um, Lee. <laughs> Lee's got some, yeah, some views yeah. that um, wrap up the talking points at the end of the discussion. But he's obviously okay. more than welcome to jump <laughs> in at any time. Just he's not. I was listening to everybody else. I kind of agree with everybody. Um, what well, okay. said, I was in the Royal Meridian at weekend, um, and they actually did a good job, but everything was wrapped in plastic. 
the pens are in plastic. There's guys chasing you to sign everything all day. In my opinion, check-in should have gone years ago. It should have been automated check-in years ago with a welcome face. Um, in terms of what Firas was saying about travel, um, JK Design, we specialize in the complete end-to-end guest travel experience because we design aviation, we design the lounges, the airports, now the autonomous vehicle transit and the hotels. Um, uh, early on Instagram, I saw there was a post from Pallavi Dean. She posted this um, a feature from Priestman Good about a new, basically, contactless economy seat. Now, Priestman Good are our main competitor, but I'll let her off with that one. But um, <laughs> the thing is, they've actually posted this to be media friendly. This is a concept. This is a previous concept. Now, we have been designing socially distant seats for years in terms of business class and first class. Now, mm -hmm. what I said. Was, was interesting and correct that obviously business travel is probably, I wouldn't say it's gonna be non-existent, but I think in terms of meetings, you'll probably go for one and then that's it and that everything can be done um, via video conference. But what the trends that we're facing now is there's gonna be a lot more pre premium economy. So basically the class system in the plane, everybody will just move up and then the economy will gain more space. Now, going back to the article about the touchless, um, I mean, basically, home automation has been around for the past 10, 12 years. Mm. You have the excuse that it's non affordable to go in hotels, to be honest, is ridiculous. And I, I'm one of these people, I think, that although COVID's been devastating for a lot of people, the immediate effects are not the issue. It's been more a chance that we've had, we've actually sit back and look what is wrong with certain industries. And um, the automated technology should have been incorporated a long time ago. It should be it should be mandatory. It should be part of the star rating. It should be part of the operator rating. Now, in terms of how technology can help in future, if I move back to the, the designs we're currently working on on planes. So it's, a, it's, it's been a complete contactless check-in for years now. You, you get from, well, we're actually in the process of doing autonomous vehicles, which is a bit more advanced, where you can adapt the vehicle to suit your, your use, whether it's an office sleep mode, family mode, to get you to the airport. You check into the lounge through your own smartphone. Um, you then check into the plane, all the baggage is checked in. You then get to onto the plane. You control your your own setup. There's no paper. There's no menu. The media system you can control to your own. You can then now, what Jane was saying. I didn't want to go too much into this because the sort of closing statement, if you like, which is the future of hospitality and how touchless can actually help. In our opinion, this the, the contactless aspect. Being able to open your door, being able to operate the lift, the technology has been there years. What is the future is how the, the, the smart technology operators can adapt and collaborate with other hospitality partners to, to generate revenue. Now, we're actually working in a lounge in Europe at the moment, an air lounge, where this is revolutionary with the whole AI technology entry system. Again, uh, reiterating what Firas said, the, the business class is probably going to be not so much a thing of a pass, but the lounges that we're now developing are no longer segregated first and business. They're a single lounge. The first class um, passenger can get extra access in priority to certain areas, but it's more of a revenue generator so that the premium economy people go in there's collaborations with local F&B outlets, hospitality partners with the transit hotels. And so the, the future, for, for, from our point of view, is this collaboration. And then I suppose in that, in that instance, the next generation for hospitality is not to just have the operator, the client, or the designer, but you will also have the, the hospitality, sort of the person who brings all the operators together. So you're actually promoting other facilities, other local facilities. You're changing the experience. Each guest can tailor their own experience and it's different each time.
Thank you. That sounds like it's something that if it was developed in the Middle East or in Dubai, I think we've traditionally brought in a lot of our concepts from outside to develop them here. Can you see maybe now people are staying more locally and there's more staycations and staying in hotels? Do you think we'll start to see more homegrown brands coming through in terms of hotels and these F&B concepts and they could be forming this partnership together? Definitely. I mean, again, this is what I've, I've said as well from for a long time is that <clears throat> the UAE tends to um, bring in successful F&B outlets, hospitality um, venues from overseas. Um, and the UAE is a fickle market and there's lots of restaurants and they change very quickly. But we, we very rarely produce homegrown um, trends and, and, and movements, which then we sell the franchise abroad. So I think this, yeah, this is a positive time for hospitality and, and rethinking the, the complete model. I mean, looking at, again, the, the immediate response to COVID in terms of F&B, in my opinion, although it's been devastating, people have lost jobs and they've lost money, but I think at the moment it's good. The restaurants are full. People are choosing to go to different restaurants instead of the same one all the time because there's a limited uh, amount of space. So I think it actually helps this fickle mentality that we have and will probably keep the F&B, the, the restaurants we have currently open longer while the, you know, the, the progression happens with in terms of design and looking at a more, um, you know, end, uh, you know, end result, shall we say. To anyone on the panel who wants to pick that up, do you feel, are you feeling the positivity? You, is there things in your pipeline you're excited about or what's the feel of the market right now? I know we don't want to maybe Jeez. shout about stuff when people are going through a hard time, but um, you know, just what if I could just take the temperature of the industry right now. To be honest, for, for us, uh, it's uh, work still coming up. There is still new contracts that have been signed, so it's we are fairly positive with the amount of work. So pipelines in general are are good. We obviously the, there is this struggle and something that with many of the other either directors or owners of firms in the Middle East is cash flow. Cash flow has been the biggest obstacle really for, for all of us. Is it's when the pandemic started, it, it sort of paralyzed payments for the right reasons or for the wrong reasons, but it was a perfect excuse sometimes not to pay consultants. So it's 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 something that we really that's I would say that's my main concern. My main concern. But pipeline projects are still there. The projects are still being awarded. Clients are seeing, I mean, we we, uh, we specialised on luxury hospitality and luxury restaurants as well. So our clients are not looking at next year. Our clients are looking with this RFPs that are being received now, you know, uh, projects that they want to launch in three years' time, you know, new architecture, new interiors, etc. So for yeah. them, this is a window of time. Having said that, obviously, it affects their cash flow. It affects cash globally, the availability of it. It's, it's an issue for everybody. Yeah, I believe, um, I don't think any hotelier or hotel company uh, will jump at future plans until we all are certain what's going to look like after the pandemic ends or after the kind of vaccine. Uh, but for new built hotels, uh, there is a very specific focus in reaction how getting back to life as normal. And uh, most of the discussions also are happening about uh, the challenges uh, on uh, how things are made and where things are made for hotels. Uh, it's a major challenge. Uh, the supply chain uh, of, of the products uh, was broken because of the pandemic. Uh, many items supplied for hotels are coming from different areas from the world. So I believe that one of the things that need to be uh, settled is uh, having a robust supply chain. Uh, I think it's going to be very important for the for the coming years when you when we, for new built uh, hotels. <clears throat> Jane, there's something that you touched on before. I'm sorry to jump in again about the the touchless sort of scenario. Uh, 
and Vera, you touched on that and as well, Lee and, and Firas about the software being there, having been there, automation yeah. having been there for years. I think what we need to understand is the different levels of hospitality. You okay. have the completely, uh, you know, the, the small property or the three stars or the low four star yeah. where that that level of service is perhaps not required and a complete um, low touch environment or scenario works well. When you move up and you go towards a luxury, a true, true luxury uh, environment in hospitality, we need to find not just the solution of the low touch, you need to find a way where human beings, you can have that service, you can have that human uh, interaction that denotes the quality of that service that you're being provided while keeping it safe. So I think there are solutions for different scenarios and a completely touchless uh, environment through apps, through your phone, as we was touching on before, uh, it, it's going to be a given. I think that's going to be a given moving forward. But having that level of service that true luxurious environments or brands or operators have, that's something that we really need to work in to work on developing designs that will foster that. You do not want a robot serving you if you go into an uber luxury scenario. Well, you know, it's not it's not nice. You've seen it once, you have your room service delivered to you once and you think, oh this is quite cool. You know, it sort of opens and you get it. And then after a while, it just feels very cold and very distant. And, and you know, we've all touched on this, that you need, you need human interaction. But we have to come up with ideas of how we make that human interaction in a low-touch environment. Mm. Oh. I was just, um, sorry, with, again, what Isabel said, the... In terms of the star rating, I think we, we tend to... Hotels have become very generalised especially with stars over here, but yet in Europe, London, where you've got the boutique and you've got the Nobu's with one restaurant that are earning more money than the five stars. Yeah. It is, you have to tailor the experience to the venue. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yes, the, the high-end hotels, the resort will always demand that personal touch, that extra touch that makes it special. But at the same time, you need the, it's got to have the choice, you know, so that you can control aspects but it, it's a it's balance ultimately yes. yeah. trying, and I think if if we can get together with um, the people who write the star ratings and come up with one for the future <laughs> it would be ideal I think what's also very important for for the future is transparency I mean like that that clients feel I mean transparency is also not only in, in of course hotels but it's also restaurant chains so like we want to know like uh, and I think that's a big part of it you want to know where does it come from so where is the food coming from I mean we have a lot of issues here in, in Europe with uh, food production um, facilities like uh, where they had huge clusters of um, COVID outbreaks and I think now that's also a point like you know you, to, to feel really safe you want to know okay where does my whatever food the ingredients of these items come from to, to be aware of okay that it's not only the plastic cutlery and someone is wiping your table so that's uh, for sure not only the case so it's many uh, much more and, and many more um, things will pile up to the things that and the experience that that you feel safe and you can come back to it so we know right so and and um i think that's uh, also a, a big problem of the industry that people feel safe enough to go back to it so and of course yes um that's maybe the next step people need to see and people need to feel safe and, and uh, secure. We've touched on safety and security and some of the, the more like the nurturing aspects of design. Is there also, do you think, is there going to be demand for greater originality as people seek more than ever, they want to have some escapism? Can I take this? Okay. <laughs> So definitely, as hotels are turning to more leisure than lodging, uh, we will see hotels to be um, a kind of off the place that it's located in. So bringing a new experience, uh, bringing new vibes and ambience from from out of this this world. Um, 
as Lee said, that incorporating food and beverage uh, more by creating moments with the hotels uh, that celebrate local food and drinks uh, in a way that personalized the, the, the hotel location. Uh, I believe we have seen interest in, in, in redesigning spaces to provide uh, more kind of flexibility. Uh, flexibility moments where, where, where you can transform the look of the space and you feel flexible to to put everything back together or like to adapt for a certain occasion or a certain time uh, or a certain season uh, changing in artworks uh, partitioning uh, uh, getting smaller uh, service areas um, redesign tabletops accessories so yeah, I believe this is going to be, be important and, and, and it will bring more originality into, into the hotel design and the restaurant as well. I think, Jane, uh, we, we all find ourselves now, one, with a reticence to go out. You know, we, we used to go out an awful lot more and we now think about it a bit more carefully. And also a, a lack of, of cash that it's, you know, liquidity in many cases. So where people used to go out possibly, you know, three nights a week, or in, I'm, I'm talking about Dubai, other parts of the world, they go out one one time a week and they're lucky. Uh, but Dubai, you know what we like, it's, it's pretty mad. Uh, when you go out less, you think more carefully about where you're gonna go and spend that money. Where are you going to go and spend that, you know, that one time when you're going out for a special meal? So I think the, the, from, from the trends and the forecasts that I've read recently, or I've been part of, of uh, white papers about the future of F&B, it's very much about two very different directions. One is your <laughs> local trusted, you know, that, safe, that safety, trust, etc., that you know the people that are around you that they are from your, let's say, neighborhood, that you trust that the food is within that vicinity. And then there's the complete opposite aspect, which is where you want to escape. You want to escape the, you know, the, the hardships of the day-to-day -day of, of having gone through this, of, of living through, through this. So those were the two trends that have been sort of identified the most. And, and it's, it is required. We all want, you know, we've all touched on this as, as we're discussing to feel safe, wherever we go, be it where the food comes from or being who you're surrounded by, you know, you, you want to make sure that those, uh, you're in a safe environment. And also you want to sort of forget about it. You, you want to, you know, for one meal, you don't want to, anybody to mention the pandemic. You don't want anybody to mention COVID. You just want to have a, you know, a beverage and enjoy your food in La La Land, basically. Can you say there's different ways that people are going to be taking their dining experiences within the hotels? Um, we've had a great question from Miriam, uh, uh, who's popped up in the chat, to say, will we see bigger dining areas inside hotel rooms so people have a safer or a more affordable option instead of going out? To anyone who'd like to answer. So yeah, the question I, was, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah. The question was, will we see bigger dining areas in hotel rooms so people have a safer stroke, more affordable option instead of going out? They can do room service or here in Dubai, yeah. a lot of people order food into the hotel rooms. Possibly, so if we're yeah. going to order food in, we'll need a bigger space. Often in hotel rooms, you have a little desk. You don't have a lot of space for eating. But could we see that being redesigned? Lee, I think you started with something there. Well, touching on what Firas was saying earlier in terms of originality with hotels, obviously with our transport experience, we we do we're specialise in modular technologies in terms of how we build the the lounges and the the, the seat cabins on the aircraft. Our opinion is that modular technologies will go into hotels that's the future of, of, of especially guest room design not necessarily right up to kind of very high-end resort but um and then and that way using technology you can actually adapt the space touch you know contactless so you can create living and dining configurations or you can have sleep configurations i mean that again these things are already happening on a small level uh, but I think especially, you know, with, with the adoption of 
these kind of larger cabins that we're doing on the aircraft and the lounges and and obviously with autonomous vehicles and the technologies that's available not this is not an immediate thing but long term <clears throat> it's a cost effective solution it a it's um it's easy easy to maintain it's not going to collect bacteria i mean we're doing monocoque structures that eliminates joints and you know gaps that bacteria uh, collects in so ultimately the guest is going to feel safer because the space is cleaner it's cheaper if it breaks it's easy to replace because it's built built with components so yeah i suppose um in terms of yeah was it miriam sorry a question there's yes, a possibility uh, especially with families i think where they have the currently adjoining room so that one room could be almost converted as you as you enter the hotel to the the lounge dining setup so that you can sit together as a family and then it adapts the kids go to bed and then you stay in there and then you go to bed it's all contactless so again yes uh, the same way that we're, we're looking with one of our hotels at, uh, we've been exploring for a while in 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 room fitness with some local uh, kind of fitness partners which does seem to be very popular at the moment uh, especially obviously people don't want to be getting sweaty next to the groups of people in the in the studios so yeah i think at the end of the day flexibility and adaptability will be will be the future of hospitality jane coming coming back to to your question about the restaurants whether we see that the restaurants are going to become uh, much larger i we've been fighting this sort of large all day dinings, there's halls in, in the luxury sector, there's large halls where you know, if, if, if it's not at peak time, they feel quite deserted. The notion, the way that all day dining has been shifting now for quite a substantial amount of years is more towards your signature restaurant, you know, being petitioned in a way that if there's only 30 guests at the restaurant, you don't feel as if you are Johnny No Friends or that the, the restaurant is, is unsuccessful, uh, you know, screening areas off, etc. I, my, my gut feeling and is, is that we will have more restaurants, but smaller restaurants with the idea is that they're studied and you, you give people that opportunity to have different experiences. Again, I'm talking luxury sector. Uh, different experiences to visit, but in a safe environment. Coming back to the psychology of how the spaces should be managed, uh, I, I don't foresee going back to those halls of tables that we used to have, you know, like a nice ring full of tables, the equivalent to a ballroom where, you know, it's just, it, it becomes a little bit soulless. Uh, I think we'll see smaller scale because an awful lot of people will choose to have in room dining. Uh, the question that you also touched on is how will that affect the, the room designs? Again, very, very different depending on the segment of hospitality that we're looking at. Uh, what Lee was touching on is very much going to be that modular scenario where, you know, many things, and you see it, it's, it's been happening for the last 10 years. You go to hotels in New York and you push a button and the sofa becomes your bed and, you know, and you are in a 20, well, 20, I'm exaggerating, a 15 square meter room. And it works well for that particular segment. I foresee that uh, the rooms in the luxury segment will probably go more towards the larger, the larger unit. When you do travel, you will want an experience that is outstanding. Can you see any other elements of hotel design that could disappear along the way? And when we're talking about the all day diner becoming a series of smaller restaurants, what about um, things like um, your know, conferencing and meeting space? Are they likely to disappear as well? Uh, something. Go After ahead. you, Vera. No, it's okay. Go ahead. One of the things, briefly, one of the things that Firas touched on is that travel, business travel, is, is become, it will become fewer and fewer. You know, many of the trips that we took in the past, we now come to realize that they're not necessary. 
that through elements such as you know software that we're using now or other alternatives that you can resolve an enormous amount of things without the expense of travel without the time that it takes to travel and and it works well people have become used to it so i think that that's going to really affect meeting spaces um uh, meeting rooms etc i i wonder what the future of that will be Vera, did you have something you wanted to uh, yeah I, I mean but I mean, I mean, we are um, also working with one of the big uh, fair organization companies, so VNU in um, Southeast Asia. So, and and I mean, fairs and 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 of course events because they also do events are, are definitely massively impacted because uh, for now and till the end of the year they're not allowed to do any. So, um, and that's of course will have an impact on every hotel in regards to their meeting rooms or their mice facilities or their um, ballrooms. So, I mean, we all know it's a big industry, but on the other hand, if it's not safe to gather people um, in a place like this, it's gonna be, it, it will have to have a rethink and uh, a new coordination, or maybe um, it will disappear fully. Because uh, um, on the one hand, uh, we all know if it's in a hotel facility and uh, we we don't, we still have COVID around. It's a, it's a big uh, it's a big issue, and also a security issue for every other guest joining the hotel. Right. So I'm sensing a need for the industry to be very agile. I'm talking both the hospitality and design industry. I think everyone's having to adapt very quickly as we move on. Um, I don't know if you guys, you guys are getting a sense of that as well, or are there any other trends coming through in the hotel sector? Is there anything we haven't touched on that you, you're noticing coming up in the next, you know, the next, the immediate future? Uh, I believe many of the current changes and the, um, the customer preferences will likely last for years. Uh, and may even become permanent. We we don't know yet. Uh, this is the one million dollar question. So as a result, I believe restaurants need uh, and hotels and all the, the, the hospitality industry need to develop both short term and long term plans for responding to this uh, to this kind of trends and changes. So why the these plans must built on a low touch customer experience uh, they must also optimize the guest experience so um, the, the the originality authenticity of the, the design it's it have to be still have to be considered and uh, so yeah i believe brands that are the most successful in doing this will not only survive the current crisis but also will, will thrive and will gain uh, the the market share over, over the coming years. Thank you. I'm glad we've been able to, towards the end of the discussion, touch on something positive. Um, and I think that brings us nicely to some questions from the audience. I can see some popping up here. Shireen, drawing on what Isabel has said earlier about how luxury means personalised service with more human contact, do you see premium hotels investing in AI to make up for the lack of physical contact? Uh, Isabel, that's one for you, I think. I think AI, uh, it's, it has to be, it's a must. It's something that is going to become part, it's integral already in our lives, but it has to even be more integral into our lives. I think the, the difference between an upper luxury scenario is that that AI appears to be uh, seamless you don't notice it it's very very fluid what you see for example in in some of the luxury properties you arrive at the entrance and the the gentleman at the door greets you by name uh, they know who you are and that is all it's not that this person has memorized everybody's name it's because there's beacons you know uh, the internet of things all of this scenario that is already existing there but then in the luxury upper luxury scenario you have that additional human touch that reflects all of the ai and the internet of things that goes behind it so beacon will catch your phone arriving in the proximity of the hotel and this person the concierge will be informed mr jones is arriving he's in room x so all of this information so it's 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 necessary at every level, but I think it becomes more and more trans um, 
discreet, the more upper luxury you go. <clears throat> Thank you. We've got one more question. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if this is a question or it's a, um, it's a pitch for a hotel app. Um, and hotel app that can keep track of the guest food preferences when the ensuite app registers that the guest is in the guest is in the room. It can trigger the app to pull up the room service menu on the guest device. The guest can then watch a video of how certain dishes are prepared or find a story about where the ingredients come from and order room service right from his or her, her smartphone. I think this is looking at what you said, Isabel, about the internet of things and Vera, what you were talking about, about sustainability and looking at where food is coming from is this yeah. something that am i staying in the wrong hotels does this exist already is this in hotel yeah, design there's, concept? there's some wi-fi integrated notification that they can pop out into into your phone about the menu about the offers uh, what the daily dish what they what, what is on the chef table so yeah it's it's there right i need to i need to upgrade my hotels I need, to go, I need to find out. Yeah, I need a more luxury experience. Um, it's been a fascinating discussion. I wonder if before we wrap up, anybody has anything they like to add on any points we haven't touched on already. There is one. There's one point uh, that I have serious concerns about the effects of the pandemic. I mean, there's many, many aspects, and one is single use. Single yes. use we touched yes. on briefly. And yeah, we have. I'm, I'm, we, we've all worked very, very hard over the last X amount of years to eliminate single use, to make people aware of, of the harm that it does every time you have a cup of coffee to take your, you know, to take a new cup, straws, uh, plastic wraps, all of those things. And we have, over the last three months, it's all gone upside down. Right now, as everybody's yeah. mentioned in this panel, it's it's the excessive packaging, the excessive packaging as a sort of a way of believing that you've shielded yourself from any any you know any possible uh, contact with COVID. I find it that it's done so much harm, so so much harm. As designers, we need to factor in these things when we're designing spaces. We need to factor in. Examples that we, you know, how we behave, how we can make other people aware of this, of this scenario. What you touched on at the beginning, Jane, about how in, in the Far East, what you, and not only the Far East, actually, it's, it's all over the world. There are many operators where, you know, the single bottle of shampoo, they had deleted it. You know, you go to Soho House and now for what, the better part of 15 years, with a partnership with Cowshed, they have the larger bottles. So there's not that constant wastage of things. You go to many, many hotels in Asia in particular, where your mini bar is empty. You know, if you do require something, you order it, or you have a communal uh, pantry, let's say. And we're talking both luxury and, you know, down to three star uh, scenarios where you have the pantry and you can go. So there's no wastage. You have the little water fountains no? in the room. So if you require water, the water is there. It's free. It's good quality water, but you're not constantly using plastic bottles. I think we all need to take a step back and not say, not, not let this become the norm again. There's, there's too much effort that's gone behind it. We all used to carry a cup, you know, to go and buy a coffee. We, we used to reject the plastic bottle and now overnight it's become the norm so my my two pennies worth is please 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 let's all try to do something about this and you know ourselves and those around us just making them aware that it's still a very safe way of, of doing things without using single use uh, and yeah. the, sorry for us continue yeah. please yeah, yeah, I was. Um, I strongly agree with Isabel. It's a fact that hotel industry, comparing to other industries, uh, has been slow to react to changes that are current in the world, uh, like adoption, uh, adaptation of sustainable design practices, for example, uh, embracing lead, for example, uh, as as a design process. Uh, hotels are expensive and are polluting uh, while you are building it. And uh, also turn uh, run. Uh, there is a lot of water uh, use in it, uh, energy use. 
So sustainability will continue to be a challenge in hospitality design that, that really needs an attention. We've got a question or an observation from Marta uh, in our comments saying that they're currently in the aviation industry and single use and the all wrap policy is going to an extreme that they feel is going to cause horrendous side damage. I don't know, Lee, what's your experience with, I know you're designing for aviation and uh, lounges, so is that something you need to consider? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know, I think what Isabella said, it's the, the immediate reaction to make things safe is to wrap them in plastic, your hands especially, pens to sign things that you don't need to sign. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the general idea is that if you get a blanket wrapped in plastic, plastic you think it's fresh, who put it in there is irrelevant. You're not going to question it. So I don't think there's any need for it. Um, but it's yeah. I mean, I haven't been I haven't been on a plane personally for a while, um, so I haven't experienced that. I've been in hotels, and everything is wrapped in plastic: the pillows, the beach towels, the pens, the you know, you name it. And and there's no need. Vera, you're traveling at the moment. Um, yeah. What's the experience on planes? What's it like right now? Is it but shrink wrapped everything? I was also living during the lockdown in hotels. Too. Um, um, I was staying 16 weeks in a hotel during the lockdown. So um, I more or less experienced the change in between everything. So um, yeah, everything is wrapped up and uh, you get, a, as I said, you get a bento box wrapped in plastic. Uh, that's your menu now from now on, even in the lounge, it's everything is, uh, I mean, um, according to the facts, the latest facts on trash, uh, we um, increased our amount of use of um, single use plastic per person up to 30% per day, which is a very high number if you um, see yeah, it's sure. according to the world. And uh, we anyway, not the um, lowest amount of producing in the Middle East or also uh, in the GCC. So it's a quite high, um, um, amount we use. Um, Southeast Asia was different because they already banned uh, one year ago the pla use of single plastic uh, wrapped. Uh, I don't know how it is now there because I guess they brought it back as well. Um, that's uh, of course because we, we also, um, I mean it's a part of our work, we're working quite strongly with the plastic industry. Um, but, but yeah, it's a problem, but we all know, as I said before, I mean, you have a wrapped up plastic and you don't know who touched it anyway. So it's 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 more a kind of wiping your eyes and anyways, it's it's I mean, yeah, we, I think we all have to live with it. And just if you isolate yourself, you don't don't make it better, because if we isolating ourselves, we get more sensitive to bacteria, germs and viruses. So that's a bit like um, it's more or less we have to get adapted it and we have to um, be more careful and be more responsible. Responsible with our neighbor, responsible with the person next to us, in front of us, behind us, and, and, and treat people with uh, a certain kind of sense, um, 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 yeah, be sensitive with it. And uh, I mean, it's like we all are. I think we all are a big part of the industry and we all try to do our best. And, and it's, uh, of course, it's a, it's a big impact. I mean, it has everybody. So, so um, I mean, being in a big hotel where um, hundreds of people using the lift during a pandemic is not the safest way to feel. So we all know. And if you're in a small hotel and you might not even have a lift and you have to use the staircase, you might feel safer. So, but that's something. It's also the 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 personal experience of how you're gonna choose your hotel place. That's uh, something we all will will see in the future, and everybody will decide by themselves how how they feel best and how the chain's going to come up. And but they all have to come up with one regulation because currently there is no one regulation. So everybody has different kind of um, ways of dealing with it. There is no one, as I said already, like two meters distance, one meter fifty distance, one meter distance. But that's it. I'm sure if we had this discussion again in six months' time, it would be a completely different landscape again. Like to say, it's, um, yeah. it's constantly evolving. Um, but I think one thing we can agree that the Zoom calls like this and things like the Cosentino webinar have been absolutely fascinating. It's been a, a great way to spend lockdown and beyond. So I'd just like to thank you all for taking part. And to people in our audience, if you, um, it won't be me next time, but there'll be a, an equally, hopefully, even more interesting and eloquent presenter and equally interesting panel 
Uh, so please do sign up through Cosentino's social media if you haven't already. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you very much. You. Um, I do agree as well, obviously, on the on the single single use plastic, and I I really trust you designers and your creativity to develop something that can help to to stop that trend that is coming is coming back again with 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 all the COVID situation. Um, thank you very much. It was a very very insightful uh, conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, as Jane said, we, we do have we do have some uh, upcoming events. Also, if you have any suggestion, you want us to talk about something, just let us know. We'll we'll find the right people to discuss about that topic, and we'll make it happen. So, Isabel, thank you very much. Firas, thank you. Gotcha. Lee, thank you so much. Vera, thank Pleasure. you very much. And Jane and the full commercial interior design team that is always there supporting us. Thank you very very much. Um, I will be sharing an email with all of you with this uh, with this session recorded, and uh, we'll see you each other in the, the upcoming sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Socially distant love Thanks to everyone. Much. Safe travel. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.